Okay, everybody, hello, we're back. So today, uh, I thought we could learn a little bit uh, about writing to files and appending to files because last time, last period, we, uh, we learned how to read from a file. So uh, let's go here and um, let's, we're in IPython here, and um, let's create a data structure, okay? And um, let's put some strings uh, into a list. Uh, okay. That's maybe one more. Okay, so some animals in a list. Now what we're going to do with these strings is uh, I'd like to save these strings to a file, okay? And I'm going to call the file animals.txt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say f equals, let's make this slightly bigger, f equals open, and now this has to be a string. And I say .txt because it doesn't have to be .txt, but it's n nice if you use .txt because that means it's a text file and uh, it just makes it easier to open if you double click on it because your operating system will recognize that it's a text file and it'll open it with like an editor or something. Um, but I'm going to be using the terminal in any case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this file for writing. Okay, So I should, before I do this, make sure that I don't already have a file called animals and I don't. So I just, you know, if you're in, if you're in uh, Windows, you would just go to File Explorer and, and then see if you have uh, a file of that name. Because if you do, it will overwrite it and you'll lose the original contents of the file. Okay, that's what write will do. So uh, at this point, I've opened up that file and now I'm going to iterate over that list of animals I'm going to say for um, a, for a, which stands for animal, in L. And now I will say uh, f dot write. So this is how you would write to it. Um, a. And then Let's just run this, and then let's now f dot close. And now once we close this, and, and by the way, um, until you close it, that file uh, I don't think is going to exist. So if I go ls, oh, we do have it here. Uh, let's see what's inside of it before we close it. So you can see there's nothing inside of it at this point, although the file does exist. Because we, we cat, well, I know that's another animal, right? But um, that cat and that cat are different. This, this cat basically says dump the file to the screen. Uh, cat stands for concatenate. Okay? But now when we write, when we, sorry, when we close the file, now if we take a look at what's inside, now we get all, this, all the things we we want it in there. However, that's not particularly how I wanted this to look. So if you'll notice, it says cat, bird, dog, mouse, uh, cow, horse, and and notice they're all just kind of appended together, kind of you know, smucked, sm uh, glued together. That's not what I wanted. So in order to fix this, okay, so let's kind of like do this again. But this time we're going to do it the proper way. So let's just um, let's just get rid of this file right now. Uh, you can't really see what I'm doing here because okay, so there. 
Uh, I am going to RM is just another way of saying delete. Now you don't have to use you don't have to use uh, the terminal here. You could just end up using uh, like I said, File Explorer. Uh, I'm not going to be teaching you uh, Linux commands like to delete files and whatnot. But RM will delete it. Be careful. There's no undelete with RM. Okay. Um, that now, let's go back to our folder, or sorry, uh, IPython, and let's try this again. So L is still intact. Obviously, it's not going to change that. Uh, let's now open this file again. Okay, for writing. So the same file, which means it's going to overwrite the existing file, and then we'll do the for loop. But this time, okay. Um, I might do this. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. You could do this as an F string. So, for example, you might say write F and then you might say A and A would have to then be in uh, these brackets, right? And then you could say uh, backslash N which is the um, new line character. So if I did, oops, uh, I hit enter in the wrong place. So if I did that and I closed it again, yeah. Now let's take a look at what's in the file. Okay, yay. Okay, that's, that's kind of like what I wanted it to look like. I wanted each animal uh, to be on a separate line. Um, Let's try it in a different way as well. Let's try all this again. And so let's let's actually yeah, let's let's delete this just so that we know, you know, we've we're um so if I go cat animals now it's going to say no such uh no such file. And let's let's this time let's do it um with um the other method, right? With the with. So let's go with open and then let's go animals.txt comma for writing as f and now let's go f so let's now let's go into a loop for a in l and now let's say f dot write and now let's see if the end thing works for right now. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Uh, I hope it does in Python 3, but we'll see. End equals, and then I'll say new line. Now the end thing works with print. And will it work here? No, right takes no keyword. Um, so it does work with print because like if I go print, um, and I say, uh, you know, ha, hello, I can go end equals like this. That will work. You see, it leaves an extra space. Uh, but I guess I can't do it with, um, I guess I can't do it with write. That's okay. I can still uh, do it like this. I can go f dot right and I can go plus which is basically going to concatenate two strings and then I can say backslash n. So you can use an f string or you can so an f string the example was here right you can say the, the variable a and then followed by a backslash n or you could just say the variable a plus, which is concatenating two strings, gluing them together. And so now if I ran that, that's going to work. And now I don't have to close the file anymore because I did with open as f. And so if I go back here and I go cat the what's in the file, in fact, it is the correct uh, things in the file. Okay. So that's two ways that that you can send things to a 
to a file. Now, we basically what we did is we transferred the contents of a container, which was the list, okay, into uh, a file. Let's, what I'd like you to do, actually, instead of me doing it, now that you've seen how I've done this, I'm going to ask you to create a dictionary of, let's say, uh, how about this? Create a dictionary of, let's say, five people's names, five, five, five names of people. And it could be first and last names. And then what I want you to do is, so let me, let me kind of give you an idea of how the, fi the file is going to uh, look. So how about I go vim names.txt. So how about, we, how about I kind of give it to you here. So if I said um, oren is comma, and then I would say, you know, 33 years old. And let's say um, Bill Banner or something like that is uh, 29, and and uh, Beatrix Kiddo is uh, I don't know 34. Oh, there's no space there. There, and I think you kind of get it, right? So Bud's 19. I don't think he's 19. And uh, LC is, uh, I don't know, 44, something like that. So now, it, essentially, what I want you to do is I want you to write a program that has a dictionary. So put these names and ages in the dictionary manually in a file. And then when you run the file, what it should do is it should save the dictionary of the names and the ages separated by commas in the file. In other words, the key is the name and the value of the dictionary comes after the comma and it's the age. So give that a shot. So just create five names and create five ages for those people, put it in a dictionary and then have your Python program iterate through the dictionary and save all those people's names to a file using writing but I want them to be comma separated with the key value pair comma separated okay so pause the video now and give it a shot okay so uh, let's do it well here I've got a dictionary of uh, people trivia if you can figure out what the theme of this dictionary is. So there's some people's names and their last initial and their ages. So I'm going to use with open here and I'm going to say um, with open and I'll go uh, oops sports stars dot txt and I'll say um, for writing as uh, I'll say capital F in this case okay and now I will Go like that, and now I'm in a. I'm going to go into a loop and iterate over that dictionary. So I'll go. I could say for key comma value in d dot items. Now I could do it this way, okay? Or the alternative way for me to do it would be to say for, just for uh, k in d dot keys and then do a lookup on each one. Okay, up to you. I could do it this way as well. Why don't I just do it this way? And so now, for k and d.keys, that's going to give me the keys. I will now say f.write. And I will now, let's say I'll, I'll use a, uh, an f string. I'll go f. Now write 
the, the key and then put a comma and then write the value. And the value here is going to be dk. Okay? And then I will go backslash n. Okay? Now, we could do it like that. That's one way to do it. All right? Now, if you prefer, if, if you don't like the way that looks with all the brackets and whatnot, the other way to do this would not be not to use an f string and just to use concatenation. We could go k plus. Com now, the comma would have to be in quotes because it's, it would have to be a string plus dk plus new line. Okay? So, I think that probably looks a bit easier to digest visually. And so now if we did that and we ran it, uh-oh. Oh, I messed it up. OK, so in this case, the F string would have been better. Haha, -ha. why is this not right? And I'll tell you why. Because everything we write to a file has to be a string. We cannot write integers to strings. We have to change them into a string before we write them. So in fact, guess what? I think the F string would have been better in this situation. So let's try it again. And let's come up here and let's do the F string instead. Because if I, did the if I did the same thing, right, then I'd have to basically put int, right? I'd have to put an int right there before it. So let's go back to the f string. At least we don't have to worry about changing data types in that situation. So let's go back and let's go, OK, k. And then we'll go uh, comma. And then we'll go. Now this automatically changes dk into a string. And this is a lookup, by the way, right here. We're looking up the dictionary value for the key k, which in this case is the name. And then we would go uh, backslash n. And so now, if we close that and we and we finished it off, okay. So now let's go and take a look at what is inside uh, sports. Cat, oops. So there we go. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Okay? So now here is your next mini assignment. What I'd like you to do is now come over here and exit out of IPython and start IPython again. Now, if you'll notice, there's nothing in D. D is not defined. What I'd like you to do, however, is this file exists. This sportsstars.txt exists. What I'd like you to do is open this sportsstars file, and I want you to populate a dictionary, so create D from reading this file. So the D is the dictionary with the key before coming the comma, coming before the comma, and then the age, which is the value, coming after the comma. However, beware. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a warning right now. Everything you read from the file is going to be strings. However, I don't want the age to be in the dictionary as a string. I want it to be an integer. Okay, so you're going to have to do a conversion there. So essentially, we're doing the opposite of what we just did. We, we wrote a little loop that would take uh, a dictionary and save it into a file. Now we're going to take that file and read it and create the dictionary that we had before. Okay, so pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so we're back. Let's give this a shot. So at this point, 
we have this uh, file called sports stars. So at this point, um, let me, uh, there's nothing in D right now because we started, uh, uh, we stopped and started our uh, interpreter. So I'm going to now create an empty dictionary, just like that, okay? And now I'm going to go into um, a with open, uh, it's called sports stars.txt. And I don't have to say for reading here. I could say for reading, but it's by default it's for reading. Okay? And now, um, and I don't have to use F, by the way. And that's just a variable name. I can choose whatever I want. It doesn't have to be one letter. But it's common to think of a file as F because they both start with the same, with F. So now I'm going to go, um, I'm going to populate that. So I will say for um, Let's say um, for line in F. So now, if I do this, if I if I just now print line, I, this isn't the solution, but let's just print line and see, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so there we go. We have those extra. Uh, blanks at the end and now I'm actually um, notice there's that comma can you think of a good way to um, separate those commas well guess what I have a really cool way of doing that if you remember we could use dot split okay so now, how would we use dot split? The other thing, of course, is that the second part, uh, we don't want it as a string. So let's do this again. And the nice thing now is I don't have to close anything every time because I'm using with. So now, let's go, uh, how about I say, I could do this all in one line, OK? Uh, I could say, um, but I, but I want to pull those things out, okay? So I want to pull them out. So what should I, what should I do here? So how about I go uh, name, and I can do a double, I could, I could, for example, do a double assignment here. Um, and I could say name and age equals, and then I could say uh, line dot split. Not, yeah, split on the comma. Um, there is one issue here, and that is that the age is going to be a string. So if I did this, okay, and now um, I'm reading them, I'm going to have to populate the dictionary here. So I could say D name equals, uh, and now I'm not going to say age because that's a string. So I'm going to say int age. And so now if I hit enter, now let's see what's in D. And so perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. So there's my dictionary back with the names and the ages of the people. Um, now, notice that obviously, now I had previous knowledge here because in the file, by the way, there is, now if you think about this, um, 
something interesting is kind of going on here, and that is that this uh, int. Here's a here's a good question actually. I'm wondering when we did the dot split, um, we should run this one more time just to see because I'm wondering if I do the dot split if I just go if I just go oops if I go print name comma age uh, what am I gonna get? Okay, so I am getting those new lines. Um, now let me try it again, but this time let me try going like this. And that's what I thought. So changing the age into an integer, so in other words, if you think of it like, I think maybe I should go to my whiteboard to explain this. There's something that's going on that's very sleight of hand, which you might not understand, and that is, if you have the string s, which is equal to uh, 22, and then new line, if you change s uh, to an integer, you're going to get 22. It's in fact, it's going to annihilate or destroy or take away or get rid of that new line character automatically simply because int is going to say well I don't really know how to change a new line character into an integer so I'm just going to ignore it essentially it's kind of like a white space and it's gone but we didn't really manually deal with that so um, if we wanted to okay um, if we wanted to I could have done this. I could have said before you switch age into a uh, integer, take a slice of it because it is a string from the beginning all the way to the end, but don't include the last character. So that would skip the um, the new line character, but essentially it's going to be the same output. Okay. Um, but here we're explicitly getting rid of the new line character at the end of the line. Okay? So, uh, what's our next assignment? Before, I, before we go on to another assignment, I, I do want to specify one thing. The, this might be confusing some students. How come I did, or why did I go name, comma, age, when everyone knows that uh, dot split is going to return a list. So let me, let's me let just do that. So how about we go like um, I for info or something. And um, so now, if I did that and I went print I, let's try that for a moment, OK? And so that's, that's what dot, I mean, um, dot split is returning a list. But there's only two things in that list because there's only one comma in the file. Now I happen to know that. So, because I'm the one who, who wrote the file. But if you did it this way, we could do the same thing again. Okay, so now we could put the information into uh, the dictionary. Uh, wait, before we do that, let's actually, here, let's actually see what's in the dictionary here. Okay, so let's clear the dictionary. Oops. OK, so now let's go back and let's populate the dictionary again. And let's, um, let's go, uh, so in this case, we'd say D. And now comes the, the key. And so the key in this case, what do you think the key is? So if you look here, right, the key is the first element in the list. So it would be i0. Okay? And then not a comma, but now we're going to close off the dictionary assignment. And now we're going to have to get the value, which is the second part, right? 
So th this is perhaps you know more explicit in the sense that you're understanding that dot split is returning a list, and and there you can see the list. Oops, sorry about that. Th there you can see the list, and um, essentially. Uh, now I want the second part, which is the value. So that would be i. And now, obviously, that's a 1. But the problem with this now, obviously, is that i1 is a string. And I, I'd like to change it to an integer. But I'd like to ex explicitly get rid of that backslash n. So I'm going to take a s slice of that list element from the beginning, not including the last character. And then I'm going to convert all that into an integer. And so if I did this and I ran it, now d is, in fact, correct again. And once again, I don't have to close the file because I used with open. OK? So I think that was worth mentioning there. OK, so at this point, we've done an example of taking a dictionary that's in your Python program, or any container for that matter, whether it's a list or a dictionary, and uh, iterating through it and saving it to a file, and, and we're using comma-separated values. OK? That's, called, that's actually called uh, a CSV file, comma-separated values. Um, but this can get slightly difficult if the object you're trying to store is complicated. So for example, uh, in our case, our dictionary was just a very simple pair of uh, a string and an integer. But what if our object was a, let's say it was a, uh, Let's say it's a list, and in that list, we have other lists, right? And um, actually, no, how about this? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we could go on recursing down how many things. I mean, we could have a list of lists and perhaps even some of the things might not be a list. Some of them might be uh, a string. Uh, some of them might be Booleans. Or perhaps um, some of them might even be a dictionary within the list. So now, let's say, for example, if we had, uh, you know, some some values in here and let's say this is a dictionary and um, we have a few things like that let's put one more entry in there and uh, there you go okay so now what do we have in here well we've got a a list and we've got a list in here a string in here a boolean and a dictionary and what if we had another list but inside that list we had yet another list okay so now now I'm going to close off the whole list okay so there is L. And here's the other problem, is that what if the sizes of all these things are different? Now go ahead and try and serialize that thing. In other words, try and save it. How are you going to save it? Where are you going to put the commas? Uh, are you going to put everything on a separate line? How are you going to deal with the dictionary? Is that going to, are you going to put the whole dictionary on one line? Are you going to put the dictionary on a different line? How do you know when the dictionary is finished? Um, 
How, how do you know when you have a list inside of a list that's in the big list? So now you get into the, all these issues and problems of how to, what's called serializing this data structure. However, guess what? There is a built-in, that's right, Python comes with batteries included to do this, and it's called pickling. So the way we're going to use pickle, first we're going to import pickle. And now we are going to say, could you, we're going to ask Python to do all that heavy lifting for us. We're going to say, please take that item L and save it into a file for us, will you please? So the way we would do this is using uh, pickle.dump. So first we have to create a file object. So we'll say with open and we'll call it, uh, how about my data? Or how about, let's call it my list. Okay. And um, this is not going to be .txt because when you pickle something in Python 3, it's going to save it as a binary file. So now we're going to say uh, write to a binary file. Okay, so that's the WB. The B stands for binary. Now, you didn't have to do this in Python 2. You could simply just leave it as a write. But in Python 3, you need to specify it. It's a, and now we'll say as F. And now we'll go pickle dot dump and now what we're gonna dump is L and where are we gonna dump it to the file F so when we do this and we're done we can now go and take a look let's have a look at the look at the uh, file so uh, I think it was called um, let's go back here and I think it was called my list right so so there it is. Now that looks like gibberish, okay? And so really it's, it's in binary form and when I'm catting it, I'm, I'm causing it to be displayed. But in essence, it's not humanly readable. I mean, there's just a little bit of it that I understand, but it's not important. At this point, now I can, I don't have to close the file again because I opened it with open. I can now watch this. I can now exit out of my interpreter, okay? And so now I'm out of my interpreter. And now I can go back into my interpreter. Let's say I can even turn my computer off, okay? Come back in a month, open up my, open up Python again. And now I have to import pickle again. Now I'm going to open the file for uh, with open now for reading. Um, so I'm going to go my list, and but I'm going to say open it for reading a binary file. So it, I have to use RB. Okay, and now I can say. Um, L, I don't have to use the same variable name. I could, I could use M, let's say. I don't have to use L. And now I could say L equals pickle dot load. And all I have to do is say, just load that file into the variable M. And so when I'm done, now you can see, you can see what it was before up here, right? And now look what M is. It's exactly what it was before. So that was my L before, right? Right there. And so it was one, two, three, four, hello string, true, A, and one, two, and so now look. It's one, two, three, four, hello string, true. There's my dictionary, and there's my other thing. Perfect. So how did I do this? All you have to know is two things pickle.dump and the dump takes two arguments it says what do you want to put in the file f and then there's pickle.load and that only takes one argument which is the file object that you've opened however I warn you again in Python 3 because we're not learning Python 2 anymore this is you know 2020 
Um, this here is writing uh, to a binary file, and this is reading from a binary file, because Pickle will store and read binary files. So we have to have that B after the read and write. OK? OK, so before we end this uh, lesson today, I'd like you yourself to make a container, uh, whether it's a list or a dictionary, and save it to a file using pickle, uh, using dump as I did here, and then after it's saved, uh, make another program and load that file that you've saved in with pickle, and then print out the contents uh, to make sure that you've got it working and that you've done it. It's important. You, it's hard to learn just by watching. You have to do. So I'm asking you to repeat the process and see if you can do it with as with you know. Don't look back too much at what I've done. And if you can't remember, then obviously go back and and look at the video, rewind it, and have a look. So good luck. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Bye.